Hey everybody, it's Party Elite with some early thoughts on the Grim and the Grave DLC for Total War Warhammer. This second video in the miniseries takes a look at the new Lords of the Empire, their abilities, their campaign significance, and their possible tactical strengths and weaknesses. First up, we have the Arc Lector. Though not an option to lead your campaign, he makes for a great addition to the battlefield and for use in multiplayer battles. Think of the Arc Lector as a souped up warrior priest. With his hammers and battle prayers, he makes for a decent support combatant, aiding those around him with his prayers and capable of fending off attackers. He has a high amount of HP, good on the defensive and when he hits, he hits hard, though not as hard as the General or Karl Franz for example. He has a 25% missile resistance and 15% magic resistance alongside all the abilities that a warrior priest brings to the field with upgrades. The Grand Hammer of Sigmar gives plus 34 melee attack for 36 seconds to units within 45 meters. The Grand Shield of Faith gives plus 22% damage resistance for 21 seconds within a radius of 60 meters, and Grand Soulfire has a larger strike area of 20 meters, bombarding for 7 seconds and increasing magic resistance by 90%. Make sure to use these abilities on the appropriate units. Plus 34 melee attack on a unit that does little damage to the enemy it's fighting is a waste, for example. In terms of mounts, he remains grounded with a Warhorse or a Barded Warhorse, providing him with the opportunity to get involved in some hit-and-run tactics with cavalry, and to quickly move between engagements to provide support as needed. His strength lies in his ability to give strength to weakening flanks, and to help overpower specific engagements. Increased damage resistance alongside increased melee attack can change the tide of battle, collapse flanks, and prevent unnecessary losses. All three of his upgraded abilities are extremely expensive, however, at 151, 231, and 234 points respectively, so Grand Soulfire is easier to sacrifice if not facing an army likely to field ethereal units. Benediction, a warrior priest ability as well, can help maintain unit morale with plus 8 leadership, but Divine Power should be removed if not up against an opponent likely to use magic, and even then, you have to keep the caster within a 60 meter radius. Finally, with a cost of 224 points, you can equip the Mace of Hellstrom. This might be particularly advisable against Dwarfs, or when you're expecting the opponent to form dense formations, as it gives plus 18% armor piercing, plus 16% splash attack, and plus 22% weapon damage, with a 135 second cooldown timer and a 21 second duration. That is a high cost for what you may only use a couple times on the field, but used efficiently, it can help maintain an engagement while your troops wait for reinforcements. Again, the Arc Lector is a support combatant. He can hold his own in a fight, and will greatly help those around him win as well. Put him up against a decent melee combatant lord on the other side of the field, however, and he might have a harder time. Try to pair the Arc Lector with an appropriate unit based on who you're up against, anti-large, armor-piercing, etc. On a mount, you can transition the types of units he supports, allowing you to react to the enemy's approaches and strengthen your lines accordingly. And then, we've got Volkmar the Grim. On the campaign map, he's very partial to flagellants, with powerful upgrades available for them. Negative 15% upkeep costs, and a plus 30% weapon strength for them as well. He also starts with a unit of flagellants and the Tatter Souls, a flagellant regiment of renown. Alongside them, he starts the campaign with Knights of the Blazing Sun, a strong cavalry unit that I'll cover in an upcoming episode of this miniseries. On the battlefield, at the core, he's similar to the Arc Lector, except with less HP, less armor, less melee defense, but significantly higher melee attack and weapon strength, and slightly higher charge bonus, leadership, and speed. His melee attacks also cause magical damage and flaming damage, so he has added benefits against specific unit types, an important thing to keep in mind when providing him with targets on the battlefield. At the base level, he's much easier to kill than the Arc Lector because of his reduced defensive stats, though he is offensively capable. His Jade Griffin, which can be equipped for 198 points, allows him to replenish his hit points, which can help counter the reduced HP, but does little to help his reduced defensive stats otherwise. Also, he has Missile Resistance at 15% and Magic Resistance at 25%, which is the reverse of what the Arc Lector has. With Volkmar the Grim, you're likely to take the War Altar of Sigmar. This greatly increases Volkmar's HP and armor, with decent increases to his charge bonus and speed, but it sacrifices his abilities in combat significantly by reducing his melee attack, melee defense, and weapon strength particularly harshly. To replace these reductions, he's now able to cause fear and terror, is unbreakable, and can also cast banishment. And his mass is extremely increased, naturally, leading to some devastating charges that can severely disrupt enemy lines but resulting in reduced effectiveness in prolonged combat, making him more of a support unit. 
It also results in the same caveats as any other chariot would face in terms of needing micromanagement to ensure he doesn't get surrounded and pinned, especially by anti-large units. His magical and flaming damage are particularly useful against specific factions and units within them, such as those that regenerate or ethereal ones, but he can be overwhelmed by the right units. Both additions to the Empire Lord lineup are aggressive additions. Great support units with the ability to dive into the fray, they are among the most devastating of Empire Lords now available. I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on them, and whether you're planning on featuring them heavily or not. As great as their stats are, their abilities are expensive as well as their base costs, and that may result in an army that isn't entirely prepared for all situations. As before, this is an early analysis. With more gameplay, other approaches and strategies will become apparent and ready for presentation and inclusion in my beginner's guide. In the next episode, we're going to look at the new units available for both factions, followed by a final episode dedicated to the Regiments of Renown.